Do you know how much time you have left? Obviously, on every one of your birthdays, people wish you a long and prosperous life. No one ever plans to live for a short period on Earth. We all pray for more life and more life. But the truth is, we don't know how much time we have left. If only we knew, we would take our life more seriously. How much time do you have left? This is a question to ask yourself at all times, constantly. I marvel when I see people who live as though they are destined to live forever, or the world is the only place humans are created to live in and nothing else afterward. What do I mean by this? I mean, the earth is not your final destination. You still have a home to return to. A home where your input and impacts here will decide how you will spend your eternity. Often, people regard teachings like this as out of vogue. But the truth be told, if all humans on earth live with the consciousness that there is a heavenly home to go to, the world itself would be a better place. Now, going back to the subject matter, how much time do you have left? And how much time do I have left as well? Is it 30 years, 40 years, or one year? I wish I knew though, just as you want to know too. But God, in His supremacy, has hidden this from us all. We know we will die someday, but all of us do not know how soon or far away that day will come. For some, it came very early, when they've barely begun to find their feet in life. For some other people, they lived longer than they expected without achieving so much. Family background, health status, societal status, and other physical factors have nothing to do with this. This tells us that our time of departure is not dependent on what we have or don't have. By this, I mean a man's life is not preserved in the abundance of his wealth. The parable of the young rich fool clarifies this. Luke 12, 16 through to 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? which thou hast provided. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Working so hard and laying up treasures for yourself does not stop you from stepping into eternity. Neither does being poor increase your lifespan. Look at the words God said to this rich man, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. God called this man a fool. There was no prior warning for him stepping into eternity. God told him that very night, that same night, he would be in eternity, in one single night. One night that was just like every other night. All of this man's accomplishments and plans and endeavors were ruined. He made business plans and life plans. He had everything planned out. He had put his 401k in place. His retirement plan was set in place. The next 40 years of his life were planned out. Look at this phrase. Look closely at this phrase. But God said three words that set this man's future in stone. Interestingly enough, one line before, we see what the man said. But one line later, we see that God said. The man said, and then God said. The man said, and then God said. Do you know what this tells me? This tells me that God's word is final. What God says is final. You can make your plans. You can plot out the next 20 years of your life, 
But ultimately, it is God who is in control. Once God opens a door, it is open. Once God shuts a door, it is shut for good. God said unto this man, You fool! This man was a fool, not because he was rich, not because he had a plan for his future, not because he had a retirement in place. No, this man was a fool because he lived without any awareness of and preparation for eternity. Now, let me ask you the question. Are you being a fool and not preparing for eternity? Is your mind so preoccupied with the grind of this earth that heaven and the afterlife is an afterthought? Are you being a fool? Are you? Are you so preoccupied with taking your kids to school, going to work, and paying the bills, and keeping up with your social life, that eternity is becoming an afterthought? Nothing has sent more people to utter darkness more than the busyness of life. This world is a busy, busy place. Are you too busy for God? Make time for Him. Make time for Him. Don't be a fool. One day you will stand before Him, and that football match you prioritized over church will look so foolish. When you stand before the Almighty God, you will think back and think of all the times you chased after women and think, I was a fool. When you stand before the Almighty God, you will think back and think of all the times you prioritized a man that didn't love you over God and think, I was a fool. My preacher growing up said this while preaching on this topic. I believe that if the prophet Isaiah was in this congregation and he heard this message, he would say, Amen. His message to our generation would be, Isaiah 55, 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. This is such a profound verse. God can currently be found, but you and I are all moving towards a time when God won't be found. Therefore, we must act and move today. Move today. Seek the Lord today, not tonight, not later, but this very second. Make sure your life is right with the Lord God Almighty, while He may be found. The rich man was a fool. Are you being a fool? No, your wealth has nothing to do with how long you live on earth. A lot of people have lived and died, both in the Bible and in our present world. But their relevance and impacts on earth didn't measure up to their length of days. In the same way, we have people who are privileged to live on earth for a few decades and the world hasn't recovered from their impacts. That is authentic living. These are people who obeyed the clarion call of the Creator. They found purpose and lived meaningfully. They fulfilled the mandate of the God who created them, and Jesus Christ is a perfect example of that. It's not about living long or short. It's about living purposefully. Time waits for no man. Now it's time to ask yourself, what and who are you living for? Are you living for something eternal? Are you living for God or against God? How much time do you have left on earth to do that which God commands you to do? These are the questions every human should ask themselves from time to time, lest we're only fooling ourselves. Consider this quote by Paulo Coelho. Life is too short or too long for me to allow myself the luxury of living it so badly. And that is the truth of the matter. Either short or long, life should be lived meaningfully.